Hey everybody, so from time to time I like to do these videos where I just talk about myself and give you a little bit more info about me. And so this is something that's kind of a big part of my life, but I've never really shared with you guys and I thought it was time. So I have really, really bad eyesight. And a lot of people will say that flippantly and they'll really exaggerate it. Like they'll have slightly bad eyes and they'll say it's horrible. But I, I really do have very bad eyesight. And I've never really shared it with you guys because I don't really want like a pity party but it is a big part of my life, so I just do want to share it with you guys. So my condition is called uh, cone dystrophy. So what we found was when we did the electrical test, we did indeed find that, your, that there are two types of cells in the retina, cones and rods. And we found that your cones and your rods are not working properly. Some people will say, oh, why don't you just get stronger glasses? That'll cure it. But that's not really the case. Glasses will help with astigmatism. So an astigmatism is where in, when you have an uh, irregularly shaped lens on your eye. And I do have an astigmatism and I do have glasses to help with that. I have a pretty strong astigmatism. Like you can see my glasses are pretty thick. So it does help with, with the lens part of my eyesight. But it does not help with a cone rod dystrophy. Because the, the cone is in your eyeball. It helps with seeing uh, l color and detail. The rod in your eye helps you see light. So I have a slight rod dystrophy and a pretty major cone dystrophy. The combination of the astigmatism and the cone rod dystrophy just causes uh, very bad eyesight. Uh, the YouTuber Vsauce says that a normal human eye can see about 576 megapixels. My guess and my estimate is that I see about 2 megapixels. Um, I think I see about in 720p because when I compare a 480p to 720p, I can see a difference. But when I compare 720p to 1080p, I can't really see a difference. So it's the, it's the same with 4K and 8K. I just don't see a difference when I'm when I'm looking at a TV and it's covering my entire visual field. I don't see the difference between 720p and 1080p. Like I'm seeing with a low resolution camera kind of. Yeah, like an astigmatism is like having a bad lens on a camera, but a cone rod dystrophy is like having a bad sensor on the inside of the camera. And again, I've got like both of those problems. So it's like I'm seeing in low resolution through a camera with also messed up color because I'm colorblind. And um, I've also got double vision. <laughs> when, I, when I look at stuff far away, I literally see like two of them most of the time. The glasses help a little bit with that, but I do, when I look at stuff far away, I see double. I also, when I'm out in the sunlight, I'll see these flashing sparkle lights, like almost like a bunch of cameras flashing when I'm out in a, on a bright day. So when I'm at the eye doctor, if it's a bad day, like I, my eyesight kind of goes up and down. When it's a bad day, I'll only see the E on the chart. I, I don't know how to explain it, but if it's a good day, I can see the second line on the chart. And that's with my glasses. With my glasses off, I can't see anything, any of the letters. This has caused a lot of problems in my life. Uh, when I was a child, I couldn't see anything that the teachers wrote on the whiteboard or the chalkboard in class. Having bad eyesight, people think it gives you like superhuman powers in your ears and your other senses, like, like Daredevil. That's not the case, but it does kind of help you fill in the blanks. You know, if you can't see anything that's being written on the whiteboard, you do kind of learn to just focus with your ears on what the teacher is saying some more. Yeah, it's kind of amazing that I even just made it through school normally. Not, you know, imagine not being able to see anything the teacher writes on the whiteboard your, your entire time in, in grade school and college. Generally, the teachers would know this ahead of time, you know, help me out in grade school. And then in college, by the time I was in college, I had a, a phone with a camera on it. So sometimes that would help out. You just open the camera app and zoom in to um, see stuff on the whiteboard if you have to in, in college. In grade school, I didn't have that because it was just the technology didn't exist. But in grade school, like it would be a problem if there's a substitute teacher because they don't know that you have bad eyesight. So sometimes, you know, you're in grade school, a substitute teacher would write something on the whiteboard and then call on you to answer it. And you have to explain to them every time, like, oh, I've got bad eyesight, I don't know. And they think, they think it's a prank or something. Like, it just causes a lot of problems in grade school. Like, I've got such bad eyesight that a few times a year, this special vision lady would come to my class and take me out of the class. Her job was to try to teach me 
just how to deal with having bad eyesight. Teach me ways to deal with it. And one of the ways she tried to help me out was by giving me, she gave me large print books. So say that this is a normal size textbook. She would give me textbooks that are like double the, the height. <laughs> so I would carry around textbooks. It was like really weird. For all my classes, I would have textbooks and just books that were just double the size. And they were supposed to be large print. They were supposed to help. But the truth is, a lot of the stuff that this lady did was kind of counterproductive. You would think somebody with bad eyesight that large print books would help them. The truth is, I'm very nearsighted. So if I'm if I'm holding something close enough to my face, like look at this. This is a hand sanitizer. So I can see this stuff as long as I can get it close to my face. Like right now, just needs to be like a couple inches from my face. Um, like I can see it. It's in focus right now. Warning for external use only. Flammable. If I hold it this far away, it's completely out of focus. I can't see it at all. Okay. So for me to see stuff, it needs to be close to my face. All right. But when you have a large print book, it, it's like twice as far away on the table though. So having a large print book, I can't see the stuff on the other side of the table because it's so far away. It doesn't help that it's large print. So a lot of the times people would try to help with things like this and it would actually just make it worse. It would have, it would have almost helped to have a smaller book that I could just hold close to my face. Um, I think that would have helped a lot more. Um, you know, another thing I can't really do is I can't really ever use a laptop. Say this is a laptop and this is the screen. I can't really use it because I can't like get my head close enough to the screen to just see the stuff on the screen. You see how close I was holding that hand sanitizer to my head? The keyboard just gets in the way. I can't really get, you know, if this is a laptop, I can't get close enough to the screen to see the stuff on it. One of the reasons I use an iMac is because I can move it close to my, uh, my face. If you ever watch the water reviews, a lot of the times you'll see me reading off the bottle and just holding it super close to my face. And then if I'm looking at notes on the screen, I'll have size, it's like 90 font in a Word document, just so I can see the, the notes on the screen. So driving, I legally, just taking the test normally, I don't see well enough to get a driver's license, but we got a special note from our eye doctor, from my eye doctor. We had the eye doctor like fill out a bunch of paperwork, a bunch of forms, spend a special, like send a special note to the DMV like asking for permission for me to be able to drive. And so the, after a lot of work, a lot of paperwork and documents and stuff, when I was in high school, the, the DMV did allow, allow me to get a, a limited driver's license. And the, the limited driver's license says that I cannot drive at night. I cannot drive on the highway. And there's like a bunch of other limitations on the driver's license. But when I was in high school, I did get a, I did get a license and I did drive for a couple months. But when I was in high school, I got into a couple small car accidents, drove through a fence, drove into somebody's mailbox. You know, in those few months in high school, I had way too many close calls where I would be, you know, I'd be driving and I wouldn't see somebody on a bicycle in front of me until they were like 10 feet in front of the car. So I would have way too many close calls driving around that, um, even though I have, I have a driver's license still, I just voluntarily don't drive because I know it's not worth the risk. I know I, I had so many close calls when I was driving around that I know it's not worth the risk of me injuring somebody else or me, you know, getting into an, getting into an accident. I just know it's inevitable that if I drive, it will happen. I can afford one. Some people will see me taking the bus and they think I'm poor, but I can afford a car. I just choose not to drive. Also driving... I cannot, I was never able to see street signs or house addresses. I can't see brake lights. I mean, actually the truth is I can see brake lights at night and I can see red lights at night, but my, my license says I can't not drive at night. So it's just counterproductive, but that's, that's how the law is. Arbitrarily has that limitation that I cannot drive at night because of bureaucracy, even though I can sort of drive better at night because I can see brake lights and red lights. Some other problems is, am I, if I'm at Taco Bell, I kind of have to just memorize what they what they have. Because if you're ordering, you know, over a counter or any, any fast food place, 
if there's like a, a menu on the wall behind a counter, I just can't see that. You know, thankfully we all have smartphones nowadays, so you can just, you know, turn on the camera and zoom in. Thankfully you can do that. Some people, um, sometimes I'll be at a fast food place doing that and a worker will be like, hey sir, no pictures. I don't have to explain to them, no, I'm, I'm looking at your menu, I'm, I have bad eyesight. But it's annoying having to explain that uh, or even just shopping at sh uh, grocery stores say this is the store shelf if i'm standing here i can see the price on the shelf but if i'm looking down at a price at the bottom of the shelf i just can't see it so it's another case we'll have to use my phone to zoom in on the price because i just can't see it or I have to kneel on the floor to see the price at the bottom of the shelf that's an easy fix that stores could just make their their prices larger but most don't also i take the bus Another problem with the bad eyesight is you can't see the bus number, but only when it's like 10 feet away. So sometimes you have to wave down the bus and sometimes I miss it because I don't see the number until it's like 10 feet in front of me and it's, you know, too late to um, stop it at that point. So that uh, causes problems. Sometimes there's difficulty even just walking across the street for me because again, I can't see brake lights on cars and also turn, turn signals. I can't see if a car is turning or if they're just going straight. And also, when you have bad eyesight, it's hard to tell. If there's a car going past you, it's easy to tell how fast it's going. But if there's a car coming towards you, it's hard to really identify the speed it's going. A lot of people don't realize this, but when a car is coming towards you, the way you tell the speed of the car is just by a small, you know, insignificant increase in the size of the car that's coming towards you. That's how you determine how fast it's going. But when you have bad eyesight, that small change in the size of the car coming towards you is hard to tell, so it's hard to determine how fast it's going. And then just the calculation of um, when it's the right time to go across the street. And it sounds silly, but it's legitimately like real problem. Another problem is uh, Snapchat filters. I can't really use them. I never really use Snapchat filters because, you know, if I want to see the filter, I have to hold the, the phone this close to my face. But my head gets so big at that point that you know, my head gets so big on the screen that it doesn't even work with the filter. So you have to hold the phone like this far away to use the filter, but then it's so far away for me, I can't even see the, the filters. So, um, also like I thought about doing live streams and, um, but I would have to hold, I would have to hold the phone about this far away. So you actually see my face, but and then the screen is so far away. I wouldn't be able to see the comments from, from people, um, in the live stream. So there's problems with this stuff like that. And I think a big reason that computers are a big part of my life to me is because as long as I can get close to the screen, I can see it pretty much as well as anybody else. Um, and it kind of is a equal playing field for me, like unlike a lot of other stuff in life. Another problem I've had is in, in college and high school, I took art classes and I would do these paintings. And uh, like one time I painted a landscape and I made the sky, I think I made it purple. And the art teacher was confused. They're like, oh, are you going for, I don't know, some artistic style in your painting? And I'm like, no, I, I just made it blue, but it was actually purple because I couldn't tell the difference in the color. That's, that was a problem. I mix up blue, purple, and pink. I mean, there's, there's negative and positive colors, but if it's like paint, then I'll mix up black and red. When I bleed, it looks like black to me. Blood looks black to me. Um, I also mix up black and brown. I'll mix up green and yellow and orange and brown. Like I mix up a lot of colors. I, just, I don't understand what colors look like to other people because I've just never experienced them from a normal point of view, normal point of view. Another problem I've had is being sick. There have been times where I've pooped and the poop looks a weird color. It looks really dark sometimes when I'm sick and sometimes I worry that it's like red and I worry that I'm pooping blood but I can't tell because I'm colorblind so thankfully there's an app that has come in handy um, once or twice it's called be my eyes where you can video chat with um, other people and you know I don't just go straight to the poop but I explain to them my situation and if they agree to look at my poop do a video chat with them and they'll tell me what color it is. So that's come in handy. Smartphones have really been a lifesaver. Google Maps, if that didn't exist, my life would be so much harder because I can't see street signs. But Google Maps, it makes life so much easier. It just tells you exactly, you know, go left or right. Like even walking around, it helps out. Another big problem is not seeing people's facial expressions. 
I think I got a lot of my understanding of people's facial expressions from watching television and movies because normally people sit pretty far away and I just, I can't see their face. I can't see the expression on their face. But on movies, they'll go from a wide shot to a close up of somebody's face. And that's my way of experiencing. When I, when I was a child, that's my way of, of, of seeing people's expression on their faces from TV and movie. And, um, you know, I think children when they have good eyesight they, they see other people's facial expressions and kind of emulate that and learn how to how to have their own facial expressions from seeing that but for me I think I got that from watching television and I think when you tell jokes to people you gauge their reaction by the expression on their face so I think there have been times where I'm telling people a slightly off-color joke it's hard for me to tell if they're enjoying it or not because I can't see the expression on their face. I can't see them frowning to them smiling. It's such a small difference that if they're sitting five or ten feet away or whatever, um, I just can't see the expression on their face. Or sometimes just us people will understand what's on your mind by a small change in your eye, but I can't see that. So it's, it's hard for me to gauge if somebody's enjoying something I'm saying or not um, without them saying it out loud. Another problem I've experienced with bad eyesight is just playing board games with people. I go to this board game group, but so many board games are based on color and seeing small details on the other side of the table that just causes problems all the time. You know, also playing video games as a kid. We, you know, we had a smaller TV and my friend had a smaller TV. So there were times where like, this is the screen and my face would be like this, just so I could see what's on the screen. And my friend will be like, hey, get your head out of the face, get your head out of the way so I can see what's going on. <laughs> so like, that's, it just, Having bad eyesight, it causes problems in all these different areas. Uh, when I was a child, I would play soccer, and there were situations where our our jersey would be a very similar color to the other team's jersey. Like, maybe ours would be yellow and theirs would be green. But to me, I can't see the difference between yellow and green. So, when you're playing soccer with somebody, it's a lot, it's a lot harder when you can't see whose team somebody's on by the color of their jersey. Just makes it a lot more difficult. My father also has a, an eye condition. It's a different thing. He has macular degeneration, which is a um, an even worse eye condition. Um, so thankfully, you know, growing up, I had him to also help me out and show me ways of dealing with having bad eyesight. You know, I, growing up, I'd always see him explaining to people like that he has bad eyesight and um, asking a few people for help in, in situations like that. And he, he's never driven, so it's been nice having somebody in my in my life like that to relate to. I think it would be a little harder if I didn't know anybody with bad eyesight. Having bad eyesight has caused problems in jobs. Like in college, I was an RA. A big part of being an RA is walking around the dorms looking for people drinking, okay? There were times at the end of the semester, my first year, where people would say like, Oh, thanks, John. Thanks for being such a cool RA. And I'd be like, what do you mean? And they'd be like, oh, you let us, um, we walked past you with beer in our hand and you didn't say anything. You didn't report us. That's because I didn't see them. I didn't see them doing that. I was an RA for two years and I never told my bosses about my bad eyesight because I didn't want them to think I wasn't capable of doing my job. Even though that was the case, even though it did, you know, impact me being able to do my job, I just kind of kept it a secret and didn't tell them about it. I didn't want them to think less of me, not being able to see, not being able to um, see, you know, small details like that. Because somebody holding a Coke and somebody holding a beer, you're just looking at like a tiny difference in the text on what, on, you know, in between their fingers. You, you need very good eyesight to see that, I guess, or eyesight better than what I have. It's caused um, problems with other jobs and just stopped me from even a, even bothering to apply for other jobs. Like, I would love to be an Uber driver. Don, my, my roommate, is an Uber driver. I, he's making a lot of money. I would love to do that, but I just, I can't drive. I, I thought about being an air traffic controller. That's a job that pays really well, and I think I would be good at it, but you need good eyesight to do that job. Um, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a doctor or a surgeon, but you can't really do that if you have bad eyesight. If you're operating on, on somebody, you have to be able to tell the difference between the color of, you know, what you're operating on and, and be able to see what's inside and be able to, if somebody, if somebody says, hey, look at this rash, you have to be able to see it. You have to have good eyesight to do a lot of jobs and it's, um, 
causes a lot of problems. I went to college for video production. It's even a problem with that because a big part of um, using the equipment, the camera equipment, is setting the white balance and making sure the cameras are in focus. So there have been videos where I put a lot of effort into them. I just didn't see that they were out of focus until I was editing them. It's you know caused problems in a lot of situations like that. And with video production, when I first got out of college, I was looking for jobs to do video production in. I was offered some jobs actually on the other side of Pittsburgh that are in areas where buses don't go to. So I just had to turn down those jobs because I didn't have transportation to get to those jobs. It's not just a problem with doing the job, but it's also a problem with getting to the job. So throughout my life, I've sort of kept it a secret from some of my friends. With some friends, I'll, you know, tell them right away. And with some, some friends I've known for years and I never really bring it up. And even with YouTube, I don't bring it up to you guys. I don't, it's not something I talk about all the time. I've made over 9,000 water episodes, thousands of videos on other channels, and I've never really talked about it like this. And it's kind of because I don't want to be known as the guy with bad eyes. In season two of The, op of the Office, Ryan th says that he doesn't want to be known as that guy. He doesn't want that to be his defining character. He doesn't want one thing to define him. And I really related to that with my eyesight. I think it's season two, episode four. I don't want to be like a guy here, you know? Like Stanley is the crossword puzzle guy and Angela has cats. I don't want to have a thing here. You know, I don't want to be the something guy. Because I don't want people to see my bad eyesight as a limitation. I just want them to see it as a thing. I don't want to be the, the guy with bad eyes. I want to be the guy who drinks water or the guy who makes videos or some other thing, some other positive thing. I don't want it, I don't want it to define me as a person. Um, but it is big part of my life causes a lot of problems here and there and thought about it. And it's like, if somebody offered me $500,000 or perfect eyesight, I would go with the perfect eyesight, how much of a, you know, a problem it is. But on the other hand, if somebody offered me $2 million or perfect eyesight, I would probably go with the $2 million. So I'm very cheap. That just gives you an idea of how much it hurts my life and how much harder it makes things day to day, um, that it falls somewhere between half a million and two million dollars, what it's worth to me to get it fixed. Um, but just right now, there's no cure for cone dystrophy. My whole life, I've been hearing about stem cell research and them working on a cure for it, but it, it just doesn't exist. Cheers. Thanks for watching. When you have a cone dystrophy or a predominantly cone dystrophy with a rod component, you often don't like light, so you're photosensitive anyway. Uh, this gentleman has clinical signs of a bullseye maculopathy, but with hypopigmented peripheral fundus.